and hello there. Welcome back to AWS On Air. We're not the same people as it was just before us, right? That's not, we're not the same. Except we're the same now. We're right? the same now. You're we're just the same. switching. Yeah, we're, just, we're moving really, really fast. Hello, friends. Welcome to AWS On Air. My name is Darko. That is Kobus. We're going to be talking to you about a lot of great things today. So before we kick it off, Kobus, tell us, tell me, tell them who Ooh, are you, okay. what do you do, and why should you care? Why you care? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, short versions, uh, developer advocate at AWS, similar to Docker here, and I moved from Cape Town, South Africa, hence the accent, and living in Seattle now. Um, mainly DevOps, automation, cloud fun, and yeah. So what's, what's, the, what's the best food from South Africa? Oh, it's a tough one between barbecue and I think our curries and stuff. Okay, so yeah, um, good on that. Thank you, Kobus. And uh, my friends, my name is Darko. I, I actually opened up the show uh, this morning, so if you've been here during the morning, do come and say hello in the chat. So my name is Darko. I am like this gentleman, also bald and bearded, but more importantly, I'm a developer advocate. I get to talk to you, developers, builders, engineers, and everything in between, all about technology, open source, coding, generative AI, AWS Cloud, and well, anything that comes in between those. Um, today, Kobus and I are here to talk to you all about how you, yes, you, the developer in chat, how do you, um, do things in this wonderful world of generative AI? How do you navigate the rough waters of generative AI? How can generative AI, and please do keep a count on how many times I say generative AI, <laughs> how can generative AI help you have a better day? So uh, we're going we're gonna to talk to you about our experiences and how we yeah. build stuff, how we do stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, that's going to be a cool thing. One thing you should know, this man and myself are not technically software developers. <laughs> You are? I am. Oh, you are, okay. I'm not. Um, he is. I'm not. I'm a person who appreciates code. I know how to code, but I've never have coded for money. He probably has. Uh -huh. So um, I, uh, but generative has changed a bunch of that, right? It's changed a lot of the ways yeah. we do things. And I think that's a very important aspect of this, uh, of, of what has changed and how does that change it and how this generative AI thing we have right now is helping us as devs be better devs or be yep. developers well, at all. Better and more productive. Is, yeah. yeah. So, Kobus. Tell yes. me, how, how, how does generative AI help you as a developer? Oh, it's a number of main points. I think the first one is like any kind of question you have, like if, whether it's about how does the code work, what libraries are there available, how do I do this in a different language, yeah. you just ask it, you get an answer. So it helps you basically on the path without having to you know, open up the usual 10 sites, figure out do I like this or not. Yeah, and yeah, yeah exactly. It's, it's, it's just kind of, it's kind of this, um, somebody told me this, it's this, it's this wonderful little intern that sits next to you, and they don't judge. Uh, it's, it's a combination. It's an intern because it does all the like b tasks for you that you don't want to do. It's also a senior dev that knows what's going on. It's an experienced person at the company that can tell you what the code actually does okay. as well, and none of them get tired of your questions. And they never judge. Yes. They never judge, yes. which is always a good thing. Um, so yeah, that, that is absolutely true. And, and, and I think, uh, in my experience, the way this used to work really well for me was that it, as a developer, right? You are in the flow. You're amazing. You're writing code. It's all going great. It's just like, oh, this is amazing. I, I am building, building, doing stuff. And then all of a sudden, just like that, you hit the brick wall, <laughs> yes. right? You just, oh. I don't know how to solve this problem. Like, I have no idea. And then what do you do? You go open up a browser, open up Google, and start searching for your problem. And there's 17 different types of approaches to this. There's also social media. There's yeah. YouTube. There's everything else. You start looking at things, and you get distracted, and you just decide, you know what? I'm done for today, I'm no longer going to code. However, generative AI, the world of generative AI, so your Amazon queues, your bedrocks, your whatever assistant you're using is here to kind of help you get over that brick wall. You're still going to do a lot of those great coding that you enjoy, but generative AI is going to basically get yeah. you over that hump. And that has been a big deal. That's a killer feature of it all. Yeah. So I think for me also the one big thing is like normally with your workflows you've got your IDE open and then you've got your browser and yeah. you hop between the two now where I'm basically just I say my IDE, I just ask questions the whole time, get the answers, scroll back up, look at the previous ones, reference them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know why that is important? Why? Because the IDE is the most comfortable place on earth. It is the best place to be, right? It is just this Ooh. whole yes well, quick one for you. Do you know why Julius Caesar always stays in Vim for one month of the year? Why? He's afraid of the IDEs of March. Oh my God, Columbus. Okay, um, we're gonna show some code right now. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna show up my screen, and we're gonna be doing some something. We're gonna show you some some application code that we have here prepared. Yeah. And um, th the thing we're gonna be talking about is how does this whole thing help us 
do better stuff, right? Yeah. So, Kobus, what do we have here? This yes. is the code you've written. What is this? Yes. So, this is basically a little app in Python that I've been building to help me with my anxiety. Okay. <laughs> yes. Not, not in that sense. So, basically, I'm busy going through the process of getting a green card that involves watching the... Um, one website, every month there's a new bulletin, and inside that bulletin there's a new date. And obviously it's embedded with tables and things, and I want to know when the new one comes out and what the new dates are, and also look at the historic data. So instead of like sitting there every morning going F5, 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 um, I decided let me go scrape the website. Because I mean, it's just plain HTML, it's got a table, so let's go for it. So I went and built a thing. The code is interesting, um, because you have to iterate over the different divs inside the page, but it gets me my data at this point. Yeah. And, and, and this, is, this is the thing, my friends. Um, this code is, <laughs> he knows what that is. I don't know what that is. Like, I, I get this is Python, and I could potentially spend some time here figuring out this whole code, what it does. And Python is, to its benefit, relatively easy to read. But, but I'm not a Python developer. Hey, there you go. <laughs> I'm Java, C Sharp, and a couple of other languages. Like, so this Python is basically, I built all of this just with Amazon Q questions. Ah. Yeah. So, so, so here's the thing. This code may be good, may be really bad, um, but what what are we going to use here is we're going to use Amazon Q, or Amazon Q Developer, to help me, not Cobus, understand what this code does. And this is a great feature. By the way, Amazon Q is a, is a is a plugin basically for your VS Code, JetBrains IDEs, and I think from recently Visual Studio yeah, as well. Yeah, something like Visual yeah. Visual Studio as well was launched. So Amazon Q helps keeps you in the world of your IDE, your wonderful little cozy developer environment, and you can just ask it questions, right? Yep. You can come here and ask it a question, how do I implement X or how do I do Y? You can ask it a question about AWS, about coding, about all of these things. Yeah. What is the good thing about Q is that it actually is aware of, of the your code. code. Yes. So for example, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to select this um, I'm going to select this whole function here. Uh, so I'm going to do here, select, and go all the way down. So come on, come on, come on, come on, look at that. Oh, there we go. That's a function. So I'll select this whole multi-line function. Right click, send to Amazon Q. Now, there's a yeah. bunch of things we can do here with send to Amazon Q. Explain, refactor, optimize, send to prompt. I'm just going to literally do explain. And imagine me being you. Inheriting a code from somebody who doesn't know how to code. Uh, <laughs> at yes. least not in Python. I don't know what this is. Here's the beauty of it. Click this, and what happens here on the side is you get, if I can expand it, you get this. You're basically sending this prompt to Q. Explain the following part of my code. Yeah. And with a little bit of luck, it says, well, the provided code is Python. Oh, look at that. Um, it tells me what the function does. It sends a GET request to the private URL using the request library. Nice. Um, it uh, uses Beautiful Soup, which is the best named library in the world. I, I love that uh, when I saw it. I'm like, Beautiful Soup, yeah. <laughs> because isn't every soup beautiful? No, but it describes HTML perfectly. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. Like yeah, exactly. So it uses that, and it finds the T body, right? It, it kind of gives me this whole explanation of what this code exactly does. Because here's. I, I, I would say it's a warm take, it's not a hot take, but uh, as developers, you should spend a lot of time reading code. Yes, you should write code, absolutely, but you should also spend oh, time yeah. reading code because that helps you become a better developer, right? So what this thing did is explain to me what exactly this function does, which is kind of useful, right? And it explains to me what it does. Like I, I, can, I can even go say, OK, uh, okay so I, I love to talk to Q like it's an actual human. OK, so what is beautiful soup? Is that how we spell it? I don't know. Um, what is beautiful soup? And it should hopefully give me an answer of what beautiful soup is in this case. Uh, it should, of course, know the context of what we're talking about. So it should give me the explanation of what the beautiful soup is a Python library that yeah. is widely used for web scraping purposes. And um, web scraping is hard. It is actually if you don't use a library, because I mean, HTML is one of those things you can't do it with regex. Yeah, but exactly. I, I haven't read up on, but people have actually done the explanation, and I think like literally the math about why you can't. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah. So if you go look at the actual web scraping part there at the top where I just look at the different divs, that was the first part that was really like amazing for Let's me. See. Like I just find diff different parts and then just loop over them. So it's, it's uh, wait, wait. So, ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So if you go a little bit up, you can see there, okay, cool. So I'm looking for the T body. And then from there, basically, there's a specific, the date pattern is for what I want to extract out of the cells, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, oh, sorry, for the URLs. And then basically, I just loop over all the URLs. Nice, nice. And, and again, this is, this is decently written code, I assume. I, again, I'm not a Python developer like this man yeah, as well. Same. So, but this seems like a very decently written code. So 
OK, that's great. It ex explains us the code. And again, you, get, you can go deeper. You can tell it, well, so OK, you explained to me what that is. And maybe you can set, tell it, um, you know, maybe we can, we can, we can take a little, little snippet here, for example. Um, this is kind of a useful case. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this, I'm going to be honest here. Um, you can do this in queue, but don't over rely on it. So here's, here's the thing. You can do send to Amazon queue. You can tell it to optimize the code. Oh. <laughs> now, this sounds amazing, right? It's going to solve all of our problems. It's going to be the best Python code in the world. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be the best Python code in the world. However, I'm going to do this. It basically sends the whole function again, and it generates me the answer, right? So it gives me some suggestions. Okay. Uh, the, the, the beautiful <laughs> soup part of this is uh, that it's not like, here's your changed file, but it actually teaches you what this thing is. And I think we all need to learn how to write better Python. Yes. That's just kind of how life is. But like, that tells you, like, here, use a more efficient HTML parser, right? You can use, instead of using the built-in one, it actually tells you to use the beautiful. So do you use beautiful soup as well, or do you uh, do you use the built-in parser as well? Uh, no, I was using, well, I use both. Use so both. the built-in parser is just to extract the um, URLs for the, because you know the page with all the bulletins. Yeah. So basically extract it based on a regex for the URLs from there. Yeah, and it tells you instead of doing the ah. built-in one, you should also use LXML or like see like that would be a better, faster way of doing it. The same goes here. Instead of using the uh, string uh, multiple replace calls, uh, you can do a single regular conditional expression, right? Yeah. Um, now, the, the beautiful part about this is that, um, um, and and here's here's my here's my relatively hot take. This is more hotter than the other one. Um, the internet. Everything we do has grown so much. We have so much data. How many frameworks are there for JavaScript? Probably more than there are IPv4 addresses. Exactly. So there's like 4.3 billion JavaScript frameworks. Do not quote me on that. But the knowledge of those frameworks is, well, it's kind of impossible for you to understand what all of there is. So generative AI, Amazon Q, your favorite coding assistant, whatever, is the thing that kind of just makes sense, right? You cannot Google it anymore. Yeah. You cannot just search all this data and get the correct answer. This thing is able to kind of deduce your requirements. Yes. What are you doing? And give you give you the correct framework, library, JavaScript, yeah. whatever you want to use. And the other big part there is at the bottom of any question that you ask, I don't know if this one had it, if you scroll down quickly, it should have references to the links, because that's one of the other parts that I love it about it is like, it takes a post that, or an article that's maybe not exactly what you need, adapts it to what you need, but still references, so you can yeah. then go read the original. Because, yeah. I mean, that's one of the main, I think, developer skills, like that joke about if Stack Overflows down, we can't code, because oh, yeah. you go look at, it's roughly what I need, and then you adapt it. Now <laughs> now you've got that second brain that does it. Exactly. And so, so again, even just be, besides just fixing your code for the better or, or improving the code, it actually helps you understand which potential library yeah. you should use. Yeah. And I'm going to give you this example. I'm going I'm to take this one more step uh, further. So you know what? Chat, in the chat. Tell us, Ooh. what is objectively the best programming language in the world? Oh, no. Since you ask it, we know what's going to happen. Exactly. The most, obje the objectively best programming language in the world is the one you know. But it's actually <laughs> Rust. It, it is, it is I'm Rust. I'm waiting for this. Rust is the best programming language in the world. And I'm going to convert this into Rust. And fight me on it. Why is it okay. the best? So, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. We can, we can flip back to our, to, to the screen share. I'm gonna be using Amazon Q to help me convert this wonderful function into Rust, hopefully. Is so, it because your Python is rusty? <laughs> yes. Um, so, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna send to prompt. It sends the whole code to prompt. I'm gonna say, um, uh, help uh, me convert. Ooh, what? Just quickly, my alley cat says no. It's pull. It's pull. Pull. Perl. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, I, I would say half of the internet probably runs on Perl. So yes, yes, yes absolutely, that's correct. Um, actually, you know what? I'm, not, I'm gonna not. I'm gonna do this whole. I'm gonna, uh, actually, not the whole. Not the whole. F I don't, don't want to do function. You know I'm do the whole thing. Select all the code. All the Python code. Oh. Uh, run uh, Amazon Q. Send to prompt. Help. Oops. Where is it? Help me convert this. Uh, this code into Rust. In the remaining two minutes, three in that the we have. Yeah, let's see. Can we, <laughs> can we convert the Python function into Rust in two minutes and 27 seconds? Probably. Um, let's see, let's it's, see. It says it's not a trivial task. Absolutely, it's not a trivial yeah. task. But actually, it 
does a good job. Ooh, it's got a scraper, it's got a web request something, it's got something with date time because I had to do that. So, so the beautiful part about this is it, it, Q knows that you need to scrape some HTML. Yeah. You need, it knows it, you need to make HTTP request. It knows that request with yeah. the W is the tool you need to use, the, the library you need to use for Rust to build this. And yeah. actually creates a struct for you, it creates a, which is a class for all of your non-Rust Rust stations. Uh, it creates kind of the functions, very similar to it. And again, it uses a lot of the best practices when it comes to like Rust. Like, I, I would say it could be, be better, like I would, I would not use an unwrap here, I would do something else. But like, it does a decently good job. Now, can yeah. I take this code and just run it? Probably not. But it actually gets me a long way to get that thing done. Yeah. For example, there's a lot of replaces here. I think yeah. this can be done better. Right? I, could, I could even take this text and say, optimize it. Yeah. So it's not automatically magic. It's not automatically perfect. But it gets you a long way there. So to wrap up, we can, yes. we can hide my screen. We don't need to see the screen anymore. <laughs> uh, you've seen a lot of, a lot of best code out there, right? The best programming language, objectively. Uh, uh, we, 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 we can have longer discussions about that. Uh, but what, what the main point here is, um, Amazon Q, generative AI, is not going to be this magical bullet that's going to solve all of your development yeah. needs. It's not going to replace him, nor me, no. not you. It is here to help you do a better job. It is here to help you become a better developer. And generative AI, makes me feel smart. Because while I can do something in code, I cannot probably do Java or, or .NET like he can, I can do some Rust. Yeah. But the things I cannot do, I have somebody to help me out. But I mean, even if you are a programmer, like for me, the main things are A, in the language that I already know. So for example, C Sharp, I recently had to do a bunch of reporting things. And instead of doing it with SQL statements, I know some link, but I don't want to you know, just try and figure it out on my own. It helped me do all the link statements so I can do all the queries in code. Um, and the same with picking up a new language now is, you know, yeah, exactly. much exactly. easier. Exactly. Folks, thank you for being part of us. It's all yes. part of us. Part of this whole show. Do not go <laughs> anywhere. There's a lot more content coming up here. I want to say hello to Kalman, uh, uh, what is it, My Alley Cat, uh, A. Santos, and all the, thank you, S3 Bucket, thank you for joining us here on chat. Don't go anywhere. There's more content coming right up here on AWS On Air.